Hello everyone, uh, like I said, I'm Harmeet Sani. I'm from the Nuaj product management team, and today I'm gonna to talk about uh, Kubernetes, uh, the work we've been doing uh, for a long, long time in containers. Today we're gonna to focus on, on Kubernetes. So, uh, the agenda, I'm just gonna talk about, you know, what are the problems we're trying to solve with containers. Uh, then I'll go into a brief overview of Kubernetes. Uh, then we'll talk about our capabilities uh, our networking and policy capabilities for Kubernetes, and then again, I'll uh, do a net demo at the end. So uh, first things first, right? We are all in the middle of a very massive transformation, I think, as far as how applications are being developed, right? Everyone's talking about cloud native, native application architectures. And the first thing you know to take away from these new applications is that there's an order of magnitude different, or maybe two orders of magnitude difference between containers and VMs, right? So where you had maybe tens of, you know, uh, VMs on a host, you, would, you could have, you know, hundreds or thousands of containers per host, right? And that means your infrastructure is gonna get stretched. The second aspect is also the dynamicity of this environment, right? VMs are something that people would keep around for months, maybe years, Whereas containers have much, much shorter life lifespan, right? People are talking about seconds, if not minutes or hours. So combine those two, right? One is the high scale, the second is the, the high level of entropy in the system. So you clearly need your networking layer to be able to cope up. And I think Sunil touched upon this briefly um, from, our, from our NFT 8. Uh, talk that we did two years ago, where we showed you know 100,000 containers coming up in less than 10 minutes. And I think the, the key takeaway from that is, you know, it showed the scalability of our control plane, right? You, uh, you need to have a control plane that can keep up with that kind of an environment. Now, but what's next, right? We've been talking to a lot of our customers who said, okay, great, you know, some of them actually took that to production. There's a top 10 company out of the Fortune, you know, 50, which has taken this to production, but they said, okay, well, we need a few more things, right? Our customer is saying, what are those? So the first thing, of course, that comes uh, to everyone's mind is security. I want to deploy multiple apps, so the first thing I need is app isolation, right? No big, I think that, that's easy to see. Next thing they talk about is micro-segmentation. Hari gave a really good talk on, on our capabilities there today. And then finally, again, in, from Hari's talk, you saw our monitoring, our visibility ca capabilities that we are going to release soon. Now, the next thing they come to us for is, hey, I've seen these solutions, these point solutions, which are easy to deploy, you know, are you know, kind of no-brainer when I'm looking at containers. But then when I look at my real applications, you know, they don't help me. They don't help me because I can't connect containers to VMs or bare metal servers. Because I have some, some, some part of my application is still running in a VM or a, or a bare metal somewhere, right? And I need to be able to connect all of these environments. Containers can't be the next silo. Then they come to us talking about, hey, I've, I need to also make sure, just like you guys provided integration from VMs with the data center gateway, I need the same capabilities with containers, right? And Sunil talked about our great 7750 platform, but there are others out there that we support as well. And then finally, they talk about, okay, I've got these environments, and I need to be able to, con in a controlled fashion, allow my containers to go out to the internet. But it can't be the wild, wild west again, right? I don't want to repeat the problems we did with, con uh, with VMs, so you need to come, come to me and provide a solution where the breakout is in a controlled fashion. And the third thing they talk about is you know, integrations. And when they, what they mean by integrations is they want us to deep, deeply integrate with container orchestration platforms, right? And that's where things like Kubernetes, Mesos, Swarm, OpenShift, Cloud Foundry, all of those come in. And the reason for that is that, you know, developers don't want to change their, the way they're deploying apps, right? Anytime you introduce friction into that 
you know, workflow, uh, developers are not happy. And I think, as you all realize, today developers are really, you know, driving um, the business. So, so that is a very key aspect that the infrastructure operators come to us and say, you need to make it easy for my app guys to consume this. And then finally, everyone's looking at the ability to deploy containers in multiple environments, right? They may have on-prem deployments, they may have it in the cloud, or they may have hybrid environments. And they want to make sure that the solution they pick is not something that, you know, A, work, today works in my data center, but then when I take it to the cloud, it's a different solution, right? They want to keep it consistent. So these are the problems that have come up over and over and over again, right? Every single large customer we talk to has raised this, you know, one or more of these. So a quick, you know, take a look at what's going on in the container ecosystem, because, you know, especially the, just the orchestration ecosystem, because there's a lot of players out there, right? You have sort of the new kids on the block, guys like Kubernetes and Swarm, right? Who, who are, were built to really deploy containerized apps. Then you've got the, the past players who have sort of tweaked what they were doing to become more and more container fr friendly. And, and they take sort of whatever the orchestration guys do, but add sort of more layers and more services on top. And then you have finally uh, cluster managers like Mesos, which is a very, very powerful uh, you know, cluster management system um, was used at Twitter, Airbnb, et cetera. And its focus was a little bit different, but they realized that, hey, you know, at the end of the day, we have to manage applications running in containers. So, so they are doing things which make sure, you know, are, are good for containers. Now, the takeaway, I think, from what I want you guys to take away for today is that we at Nuage are making sure that no matter what, you know, ecosystem you want to pick for orchestrating containers, we have solutions for all of those, right? Now, I want to share this survey. Um, this was done, um, you know, at OpenStack Austin, and it shows, you know, what are the major, you know, container tools people are using to manage their applications on top of OpenStack. So a little bit of a biased sample, maybe, but uh, you see, you know, Kubernetes is up top, uh, followed by, you know, Cl Cloud Foundry, OpenShift, Mesos. And, and even if you look at OpenShift itself, which is a PaaS developed by Red Hat, uh, it is also based on Kubernetes. So you can see, actually, there's a quite a bit of momentum with, uh, with Kubernetes. Uh, I mean, it's backed, you know, really by, by Google. It's, it's come out of their own, you know, they've used this technology for years. So I think there's no... Uh, it's not a surprise. Now, this is consistent, though, with what we've seen with customers. We've seen a fair mix of all, right? And, and as I said previously, we are supporting all of them. But I just wanted to share this survey because I think it resonates. We, we've seen similar, and the numbers may be a little different, but we've seen kind of this, these trends as well. So, so I'm going to switch over now really, and talk about Kubernetes, and then, you know, get into our solution for Kubernetes. So, so Kubernetes, as I mentioned earlier, is a project developed by Google, and it was really, it's really a platform for deploying apps at scale, uh, and, and making sure, you know, you can, you can operate your application at scale. It's been, you know, now it's open source. Um, I think Red Hat is the second largest committer, but it's a really, really open community, and a lot of community involvement in this project. So, so here's, I'm going to give a very quick overview of the architecture because it's going to be relevant for, for our discussion later today. So here's, you know, a high level diagram of the Kubernetes architecture. So on the left, you see, you know, the Kubernetes master, right? This is where you, the user is going to interact with the master. And uh, it has different services, you know, chief amongst them, probably there's a scheduler which schedules the containers across the cluster. And then there's a replication controller, which makes sure there are n replicas of a container uh, running it at all times, right? So it does health monitoring. If a container dies, it pulls it back up again. Now let's look at the node itself. So the first thing I actually want to point out is 
The fundamental unit of scheduling is not a container in, in Kubernetes. It's actually something called a pod. And a pod is nothing but two or more, or one or more containers that are co-located on a node, right? And that node can be virtual, that can be physical. But the point is that if you've got some containers which are, you know, need to talk to each other very frequently, you don't spray them, you know, across the cluster. So they've, they've come up with the concept of a pod. The other interesting concept, I think, is to point out is that of a service proxy, which runs on every node. And the idea being that, you know, pods are going to be ephemeral. They're going to come and go. So you, you know, so how do you have, let's say, pods from one microservice talking to another microservice? So they come up with the concept of a service, which is nothing but a combination of an IP, stable IP, and stable port. And the way that's implemented is through these service proxies, which are really just you know, load balancing across the cluster to a backend of pods that implement a given service. Right? So these are sort of the main components, you know, main concepts behind the Kubernetes architecture. Now, Kubernetes is not so prescriptive about networking. Um, there is a simple model that one can use, but it, it's really simple. And so that's where we come in. That's where we come in. And the idea being that the issues I pointed out earlier, that's what we need to fix, right? It does really, really great with you know, setting up your cluster, you know, monitoring your, your pods, you know, scaling things up, scaling things down. All that is really, really uh, well built and, and works very well. But then when it comes to networking, um, there's many other solutions. And we are going to talk about what we're doing. So I think you've heard the other speakers today talk about this, but I kind of want to drill in or, or still bring this out because when we go to the solution for Kubernetes, it's going to, and we look at the different scenarios, I think this will be, you know, you will see very, very interesting examples that the fact is that you don't get a point product. You don't get a point solution that if we say we work with Kubernetes, it's like, yeah, you work with Kubernetes and then separately you work with ESXi and somewhere you work with Hyper-V we can connect all of these together, right? And I mean, I'm gonna show you some examples that will make it very you know, easy to say, okay, what do, we, what do these guys really mean when they keep showing us these, you know, the ability to, to handle all these environments? So, so this is what a very high level view of, of what our integration you know, is, right? So what we've done is we've enhanced our VRS, right, which is the, uh, I won't show it there, but anyways, enhanced our VRS, which, uh, so that when we can deal with pods. So pods are now first class citizens, just like we, we have VMs running on any, any hypervisor. If you have pods, then we treat them as first class citizens. Uh, we've also got this uh, plugin on the master, uh, sort of a policy plugin, if I can call it that, which is responsible for talking to our policy engine when it needs to, right? Because all of our APIs uh, are, are you know, driven through the, through the policy engine, and so the policy agent on the master talks to that policy engine. Now, the first thing that I want to point out, right, and I think it's very key, is what, is, what do you get out of the box? What do you get out of, the, out of the box, which I think most of other solutions still lack in the market today, when it comes to containers especially, is you get multi-tenancy out of the box, right? Because you've got different teams and you want to, sep you know, for good, bad reason, you want to keep them separate, right? You want to, they don't want to trip over each other. So fact is that you get multi-tenancy out of the box. The second thing you get is app isolation, right? So you could have single tenant, but multiple, multiple teams, let's say, underneath, you're still going to get app isolation. So you don't have to go about and create, you know, 10 engineering, you know, uh, tenants, right? You could still have one engineering tenant and then different teams, and you can give them all their own workspaces. The second thing is that you get full control over IP addressing. And, and I think this is key because over and over and over again, our customers have come to us and say, okay, we don't want to, you know, we don't want it that, you know, containers just get I, any IP. We don't, when we are trying to troubleshoot this thing, we don't know what IP you know, maps to what app. We want control over that. We also want control because as you, you know, allow us 
to let the containers or pods get out of the cluster, we need to punch holes in the firewalls. So we need to know which, what app is trying to get out, right? So that we have control. Um, we want to let them out, right? We want to let them out the, in the easiest manner, but we need to know who's trying to get out, rather than saying, OK, everyone can now get out. Now let's talk about some interesting deployment scenarios, right? Uh, everyone, I think, you know, fact is yes, a lot of people can, can make containers talk to each other, give them IPs and all of that, but what is it that we can do which is interesting? So here I'm showing an environment and several of our customers have come to us with this, right? So they're running OpenStack as their uh, infrastructure as a service layer. And then PaaS is just, or PaaS or Kubernetes is just another app sort of for them, right? So they want to put Kubernetes in VMs running on the same uh, OpenStack infrastructure. And now what they want to do again is to have those pods, right? Those pods talking to VMs because they've got some services running in VMs. So how do you do this, right? And this is where we come in and we've made some very significant changes in our platform which allow you to exactly do that. So now I can do all those policies that Hari showed you, but now I can connect pods to VMs, right? With the same, and I'm showing a controller just to indicate that it's the same one controller controlling. So it's not like you, know, you set one controller up for a container somewhere, one for VMs. You can use our controller, the same controller, to control all of these together at the same time, right? What ends up happening is you've got a VRS, which is at the hypervisor layer, and then there's a VRS within the Kubernetes VM. Um, so think of that as sort of the, there is a container visor with, on top of the hypervisor. So we've got two levels of you know, VRS air to handle. So there's a lot of complexity. But all of that is really hidden from the, uh, from the end user. They don't know all of this is going on, because our integration makes sure you know, we understand if we are running in an, you know, there's an overlay, there's a middle lay, and then there's an underlay. We can de deal with all that complex complexity. Yes. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, how do you, as one company, uh, Nokia has a WAN controller MSP. So how do you integrate? Is it with your, this is a VC controller. Correct. So do you have some relation with that WAN controller? Let me answer that. Um, so NSP from Nokia that you're talking about is the infrastructure uh, SDN, if you will. Um, infrastructure SDN as in it is the SDN controller for the routing platform that we have or the optical platforms that we have as part of Nokia. Uh, and th those are for the infrastructure services, whether it's IP, uh, MPLS, um, IP VPNs uh, or optical connectivity, um, GMPLS, and so on. What Nuage is, it's the overlay SDN automation infrastructure platform. That's the difference. And of course, we have capability to connect those two together and leverage and cross leverage each other. But that's the difference. Like, this is. Talking about the WAN controller, for example, to bring up a router, a virtual router. In a virtual machine, the concepts are the same as you know. So, are you basically working? Together? We absolutely work together. Okay. Uh, when you want to um, bring up a, a virtual 7750 router, um, NSP will be used. But for stitching those uh, virtual routers together in a scale-out fashion, you ultimately need a capability of Nuage. Um, same thing with uh, virtual EPC, for example or virtual mobile gateways. Everything is leveraging the Nuage platform, so we absolutely work together in that environment. Thank you, Sundal. Now here's another deployment scenario I want to talk about, right? Uh, mentioned earlier, a uh, lot of our customers want to deploy containers in the cloud. So again, our, our architecture is such that because we're doing overlays, we can easily get deployed in any cloud infrastructure, right? And we've already have, you know, POCs with this this in place because people want to not be locked down in where they deploy things. Uh, they want to try think different, you know, environments out. 
and they want to make sure, I think the key thing is, they want to make sure that it's the same solution. It, you know, you don't have to kind of learn things one way for your on-prem and learn with another, you know, another way of doing things off-prem. And this is where I think these, the, you know, the, the way we are architected comes in very, very handy and make sure that you can run in any cloud, uh, you know, and you're going to get the same capabilities. There's going to, not going to be like, oh, we run here, so you can only do X, Y, and Z, and here you can do A, B, and C, right? So there's parity in what you can do on-prem and off-prem. Now, if we tie everything we've been talking about together, right, and again, uh, you know, bring out the power of our platform, really, here's a hybrid cloud deployment scenario, right? And what people want to do is, let's say they're running some parts of the app, Right? some parts of their infrastructure in the cloud. But then they've got some assets in the data center, which will probably never get moved out or will, you know, and those are high value assets or, or there's compliance issues sometimes. So now we know that we can control containers or pods and we can control assets um, in the data center. But how do you connect these two environments together? Right? There are other ways, right? I'm not saying this is the only way, but what makes it interesting is with, with the same platform now, because the controller can control the NSG, which is part of our SD-WAN solution, now you can securely connect between uh, you know, your on-prem and off-prem. And it's the same controller, same policy engine. right? So end-to-end, -end, I don't think any other company can do this, where they can have, provide you this networking from the cloud, over the internet, in the data center with just one platform. There may be companies which have like three different products for this, and they'll say, okay, you know, we can build this. But what we're saying is we can do this with one single management platform. 